this is Mr. L, Bill Lombard, and we're uh, going to show you how to use isosceles triangles to make a square. And as you can see, there are seven of them, and it makes a perfect square. All seven are different sizes. And this comes from one of my favorite books titled Geometry by Harold Jacobs. And let's take a look at our first piece of information here. And you want to take your paper in landscape position, and this is a standard 8.5 by 11 inch paper. And that one inch by one inch isosceles triangle down there has the vertex right down here in the corner. And that, that point right there is two inches from the left side of the paper, three quarter inches from the bottom of the paper. Take your time on this and get that as accurate as you can because the rest of the drawing relies on starting correctly. And just a note, anytime you want, hit pause on your playback. And, you know, give yourself time to uh, draw this accurately. If you have any questions, you can ask at that point. You can also take the recording and go backwards if you want to review something or if you skip something. And once you've got that drawn, let's move on to the second triangle. The second triangle is also an isosceles triangle. But what you'll notice that's very interesting is that what was the hypotenuse of the first triangle now becomes the leg of the second triangle. So in other words, the triangle number two here is larger than the first one, but it has the same shape. It's a 45, 45, 90 degree angles in that. And third triangle coming up, we do exactly the same thing. Now the third triangle is in the same relative position as the first one. In other words, the two legs that are the same size are horizontal and vertical, and the hypotenuse is at an angle called oblique. But you notice that the horizontal line on the bottom is now really a continuation of the line that you had before. So it should be the same line, still three quarters of an inch from the bottom. And it's time to do the fourth triangle, which you'll know is, is in the same sort of position as the second triangle, although somewhat larger. And interesting questions along the way here that your teacher might ask is, how much larger is the fourth triangle compared to the second one. In other words, is it twice as tall? Is it three times as tall? How does the area compare? Or how many of triangle number twos would it take to fit into triangle number four? You know, if you cut these out of a piece of paper, how many would it take to fit? Triangle five, and this is as far as you go to the right-hand side. That, that's your right-hand corner. And then number six is up here. And that's the main diagonal now from the upper left of your page down to the lower right. And then we finally finish this up with triangle number seven, and you have a perfect square. Now again, if we went a little too fast on here, you want to be able to pause the recording, go back to see if you missed anything, make sure that uh, your lines are parallel to other lines. They, are, they should be parallel or perpendicular to the edges of the paper. And a lot of times what it takes is a first draft and a second draft and then a final draft or a finished project to make this thing look as good as you can. You want to have a title on it, put your name, date, and period. And as you can see here, you can add some colors to make this thing really spiffed up. And finally, here are some of the dimensions of the triangles. Now, I've left off some of the other ones that your teacher might ask you to figure out. And some of these others, you're going to need to use the Pythagorean theorem in order to figure out how these things work. So good luck with this project, and this is Mr. L wishing you good success.